Hello, and welcome to the Tech Stack Podcast. Brought to you by the Next Gen Planners Podcast. If you're curious about how technology is shaking up the world of financial planning, you're in the right place. Every week, we sit down with experts, thinkers, and those who are shaking up this space to chat about the latest and greatest in financial planning technology. From cool tools to big picture trends, we cover it all. Whether you're a financial planner, a tech geek, or just someone who likes to stay ahead of the game, join us for some interesting conversations and takeaways. This is where financial planning meets the future. Welcome to the Tech Stack Podcast. Okay, welcome to the Next Gen Plus podcast, the Tech Stack Special. And um, today we have Katie Surjak from Scale Up Power Planning all the way in Australia. Hi, Katie. Hi, Adam. Thank you for having me. It's okay. It's okay. So it's dark in the morning here, and I'm I'm assuming it's it's late in the evening over there. Um, but it it's uh it's a it's a global world of financial planning now. We're gonna talk about technology and financial planning. So uh, I've been speaking with Katie for a, a couple of months now, and Katie has had access to Copilot, uh, in particular Microsoft. I'm not sure if I was meant to tell anyone, Katie, but I, ha- I just have. So apologies for that. That's um, okay. <laughs> so uh, as usual, we're going to do uh, the background to Katie and her company are going to be in the show notes, and we're just going to get stuck into the conversation about technology. So Katie, just tell us. Um, a brief uh, overview of what you what you've been working on at the moment. What's been exciting you? Oh, oh look, we've obviously you know AI being the, the biggest conversation. We've had a lot of um, work around that, and you know a lot of people coming to us and looking for solutions, particularly with AI. You know, how do we increase efficiency? How do we, you know, streamline certain aspects of the workflow from you know file notes to the power planning handover to You know, all those kind of things that seem to take up such a huge amount of time. Um, You know, how do we make those things better and and what can we use? And um, that seems to be the common theme over the past six months, I'd say. Okay. So obviously we'll talk about AI. It's very topical at the moment. What was Mm -hmm. the what was the moment for you where you decided this is going to be the future and you decided to get into the wormhole that is uh, artificial intelligence? I'd say probably this time last year when OpenAI became, you know, a bit of a somewhat of a household name and then ChatGPT came about, it was very much, um, you know, what can we do with this and what is this, you know, what's happening here kind of thing. And then the more I started looking into it, the more tools I found and then it was just this, you know, this digital bazaar of AI tools and, you know, and then, we kind of shifted to, okay, well, here are all these tools that are already available and obviously they're going to come out every day and they still are. You know, can we actually apply any of these to financial planning? Can we apply these to processes, to workflows, to advice formulation, to anything, you know, are any of these any good? Um, And then that turned into, you know, like a weekly newsletter of let's test one each week, let's apply, you know, a real-life case. Um, see how it works, and you know that that's basically blown up. That's now an ebook, and we're working on our second one. Um, so we've, yeah, it, very much, you know. Long story short, right when ChatGPT became a thing, we really kind of picked up on it just to, just to see, just to kind of test yeah. the waters, and you know, okay. Something and new. has your view changed? You know, so so we've had. But we've had chat GPT, we've just passed the year anniversary. Has your view changed on this technology and the, the application? Yes and no. Um, I, you know, I'm still very much of the view that there is absolutely a place for it. There is so much opportunity. And I think, you know, we're seeing that all day, every day. Um, certainly, you know, I think that there are, you know, the issues that we've all t- you know, talked about, security and that kind of stuff around it. Um, but in terms of my view. In general, I'm all for innovation. And so if anything, it's kind of sparked more ideas and, you know, more curiosity about what could be going forward. Okay. So let's let's get stuck into some of the work that you've been doing with firms because I think that's really interesting. So you've had uh you've had access to Copilot for a few months, obviously. I was excited about Copilot, but then disappointed when they had the 300 license. 
um, things. So I'm hoping 2024 will, will change that. But yeah, you know, what's been your initial impression of Copilot and its potential use for financial planning firms? I think um, first and foremost, convenience because it's part of Microsoft. You know. And like you said, there was this excitement that every, you know, and I very much expect on the 1st of November that we'll all just yeah. log on yeah. and it will just be available. Um, alas, that's not the case. But for those that do have access, I think probably the key benefit will be just the amount of time it will shave off, you know, writing emails, that kind of stuff, um, you know, managing tasks and trying to keep up with everything, you know, everybody's inbox and teams and everything is just so chock full of conversations and ideas and to-dos and everything. Um, I think it's definitely going to increase efficiency and really help people to focus on the high value, high impact tasks more. Um, I think we, you know, we get bogged down in all those, the admin okay. of okay. of work. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let, let's talk about some specific use cases. So meeting notes, meeting summaries is often an issue for a lot of financial planners. Will it do that with ease? Yeah, it certainly will do that with ease. And I think, um, again, it's convenient because it's part of, you know, everything that we already use, your Outlook, your Teams, your Word, everything. Um, that is a massive win, I think. And I think it, it comes with a great degree of accuracy, which is what I really like as well. And certainly, you know, to be able to produce something, um, you know, in half the time that you normally would is going to be an absolute game changer. And you know, if anybody can take that a bit, st you know, a step further and create some kind of templated little, whether it be Word documents or whatever, that they can then use that in conjunction with Copilot, you know, absolute game changer. Yeah, yeah. so I've been, I've been speaking to some firms that have had access to Copilot, some bigger firms, and what they've been doing is they've been training Copilot on their templates, their documents, um, and they've said since they've started doing that, it's then learning the way that they present stuff to clients so i think there's going to be an element of learn there's going to be a massive element of learning and training to, to how to use it but you know how quickly can we expect the benefits some of the some of the early benefits from you know if we if we subscribe when it's available how quickly can we actually get get time back i think pretty quickly and i feel like you know we've had this kind of 12 month introduction to ai and you know this experience with you know chat gpt in particular um and for me recently claude which was my new favorite but just how to refine you know your prompts and what you want out of it and i think we're kind of well versed enough that with copilot you can just kind of you're almost familiar with you know yeah what you need from it so for those well i mean i get you know again for those that have been doing that i think it's going to be a pretty easy transition um for those that haven't really explored the world of AI it might be a little bit more of an adjustment. Um, in saying that, you know, they've made it pretty easy to use. Uh, it's a pretty easy, friendly, kind of accessible application. So oh, I would say that, you know, from the moment you start playing with it, you'll start to see either, you know, benefits or some confidence in how you use it and what you do with it. Yeah. What what about those that aren't particularly great on office office three? Office 365, Microsoft, what about those that particularly don't have their data in a great situation? Are they going to be slower to adopt the AI and the co-pilot? I think so. I think, um, yeah, absolutely, that'll be a challenge. Um, but it's also probably going to be a great wake-up call for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, it almost forces you to be organised because you see the benefits so much faster. So I think for those people, there's certainly going to be a little bit of groundwork to get themselves into a, I suppose, a cleaner state in terms of data um, to really realise the true benefits of Copilot. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned Claude. Uh, I've come across mm -hmm. it. I haven't used it. I mean, let, let's talk about that. So so what's exciting you about Claude? You know, <laughs> interestingly, I think it's just because it's not chat GBT. It's just... It's just, you know, same, same, but different in a way. Um, I like it because it's got a much cleaner interface. Um, I like it because the responses seem to be, and I don't know whether that's just my experience, but a little bit more accurate and a little bit more attuned to what I'm looking for. 
seems to have a little bit more intuition than what chat GPT does. And I, you know, I, the specs behind it, I don't know what the difference is, to be honest. Um, but I've found myself leaning to Claude and essentially abandoning chat GPT for the past probably wow. month. Um, I just find it really, really easy to use. It just seems to be, it's like, it just knows you. It's, it sounds yeah. ridiculous, but. Yeah. What's the what's the security like on on Claude? Just out of interest, is it because I know ChatGPT is is fairly open. It's not great. Obviously, we shouldn't be putting client data anywhere near some of these tools. I don't think. Uh, what what's your impression with Claude on the security side? Again, to be honest, I haven't really looked too deep into it. I mean, I've certainly you know practice what I preach in that you know I, I tell my clients not to put private data into ChatGPT, and so I don't either. And so I really haven't tested those waters in terms of security with Claude. Yeah, I don't I, I genuinely don't know. Interesting. I guess that's the the benefit of Microsoft, just to go back to that, is it sits within your global admin license, doesn't it? So all the data sits there and it taps into yeah. your current data. So that's I think the play that Microsoft is using is the security of the the AI and the copilot. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. <laughs> Hello, just a quick reminder that Tech Stack Live is coming to you on the 15th of March, 2024. Tech Stack Live is a brand new virtual summit in the world of financial planning. And this completely virtual event is packed with specialist speakers, awesome panel sessions, and our brand new Tech Innovator Awards 2024. And the best part of all, it is completely free to attend. So reset your perspective and stay ahead in the world of financial planning. Secure your spot now at techstacklive.com. We can't wait to see you there. So you've been dealing with quite a lot of firms now. You've been consulting them on on various things, including AI. What are the threats? So I'm having a lot of conversations in terms of I've got some people on the spectrum to think, say this is going to change everything in terms of work structures, the way we, we run financial planning firms. And I've got those on the spectrum that say, you know, it's not going to change anything. It's just a fad, you know, it'll all disappear. Where where do you sit on this? Yeah, it's an interesting conversation. I've certainly had conversations in both camps. In, in my opinion, you know, I don't believe it's going away. I think there's there's way too much opportunity that people are going to seize upon, and rightly so. Um, I think it's just going to be a matter of how that's executed and, you know, to make sure that it's, I guess, security more than anything is people's concern. Um, for me, the biggest threat when it comes to AI in particular in financial planning is um, that we won't be able to leverage it because of regulations. I think that's going to be a massive issue and I think that's going to be an ongoing, and it's very much an issue now, particularly here, um, you know, and so because regulations have, you know, aren't keeping up because, te- you know, AI is moving so fast, there are the people in the against camp that are kind of going, we'll see, you know, it's just you know, it's a fad, it needs to just go away because, you know, we can't regulate it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a really interesting conversation. Um, for me, yeah, I think more than anything, I just don't feel like we're going to get the opportunity to leverage it to the extent that we could because of regulations, because I just don't feel like they're, they're going to keep up or overtake the advancement of, of this tech anytime soon. Interesting, interesting. And what, what type of firm do you think it fits the best? So, Again, we have conversations with smaller firms, tech-enabled firms. We have bigger firms. They have bigger budgets. They have CTOs, all that sort of stuff. So which which firms do you feel like it will really benefit? I think, you know, and in my experience, it's usually the smaller firms, um, those who are self-licensed, those who aren't, you know, under a really big dealer group, they will benefit the most because they don't have the support in terms of tech and funding and whatever behind them. And so they're looking for efficiencies anyway, anywhere they can. Um, So I think for them and very much, you know, they're kind of the group that I'm rooting for when it comes to these tech advancements, because I think they'll get the most use out of it. Um, I think it'll benefit them the most purely because they don't have that support behind them. Um, And so, you know, it needs to be accessible to people that, that don't have that backing. Okay, so let's talk about some of the opportunities then, because that's the exciting bit. So for some of the smaller firms you've been working with, what are some of the easy opportunities we can look at using this kind of technology that we can get stuck into straight away? Um, I think probably 
the newest one and one that I've you know spoke about recently was um, the opportunity to create your own chat GPTs. So I think I really like that space and I think there's opportunity there for people to kind of explore and, you know, whether it build your own, you know, assistant, marketing assistant, sales funnel, whatever it may be. I think there's, you know, that's a really nice kind of quick way if you can spend the time and have the confidence to, you know, to try that out. Um, anything that's going to help them automate and increase efficiencies. Um, and that's really very much what people are looking for, just anything that they can just automate certain parts of the process. Yeah, um, work, workflows, what you're seeing with workflows, are you starting to see a change in the way workflows are delivered using this technology? Are they, are they, are they going to change? A little bit here and there. I mean, certainly the majority I speak to, you know, implementing AI is still a little bit of a foreign concept. And that's mostly because, you know, we're already using some of these big platforms in the country that, you know, that aren't going to introduce AI anytime soon. Um, and so, you know, with those people, I very much work with them to first use what they've already got to its full capacity. And then from there, we start to kind of look outside and, you know, think about other ways we can integrate, whether it be AI, whether it be through creating, you know, Zaps in Zapier, um, you know, just all the different kind of avenues to to bridge any gaps that they might have. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for something that's not AI, for me, the best way to create opportunity to maximise, you know, efficiency, whatever it is, is to really take a look at your current tech and go, what am I using? What am I not using? And for that bit that I'm not using, can I use it? If yes, how can I use it? And then from there, look outside. Yeah, I mean, we, we've 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 had a strong conversation about AI here, but what are the other technology trends and tools that you're seeing that excite you? There's a lot kind of coming out. Um, I'm seeing a lot of digital SOA presentations, so a lot of advisors creating avatars so they can present their advice to clients via an avatar, which means that they can free up their space and see more people. Um, you know, that's that's certainly, um, you know, a big conversation here as well is that. So, so so how does that work? Just just explain that to us. That's OK. Um, look, to be honest, I don't quite know. There are there are a couple of platforms that um, where you can create a digital avatar and essentially just, you know, have this document alongside you on the screen and just kind of walk through it with the client, almost like a chatbot. But it's, you know, it's you and if your client didn't know that was really you, they'd have no idea. Um, it's wow. really, it's quite uncanny. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure specifically which platforms, but it's, it's there's definitely a trend in the country at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've not, we've not seen that in the UK. I don't think yet. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. So that, so is that using, that's, I'm, I'm a guess using AI, but that's almost taking us into the metaverse, isn't it? That kind of, that kind of world. Yeah, and again, you know, it, there are very much people in, in both camps, those who, you know, are very much, you know, prefer to see my client face-to-face, -face, that's what they're paying for, um, whereas there are others that are kind of going, well, you know, this is not where I'm the most impactful. If I can present this to my client this way, I can then be of more value in the background doing other things, you know, whether it be, you know, paying attention to market movements to make sure that their portfolios are invested properly and, you know, things like that. So. Yeah, again, another kind of contentious bit of conversation. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a trend. It's it's picking up. Okay. And anything else on the radar? Um, I'm seeing a lot of Zapier integration, quite a lot. Um, so people creating, you know, their own triggers to to connect different bits of software and platforms and things and you know, automate you know, whether it be emails to their CRM and, you know, calendar invites and, you know, triggering workflows. And that's certainly something I've done quite a lot of recently with clients is, you know, triggering workflows and tasks in CRMs from emails, from calendar invites, um, you know, phone calls, things like that. And they're, you know, little kind of easy, quick wins that, particularly for those who aren't so keen on AI and kind of testing those waters. Um, there's yeah. been a lot of that. Yeah. Okay, that, that's very reliant on open APIs, though, isn't it? So I'm guessing a lot of the tech firms that you can use Zapier with uh, are open, which yeah. is less less prevalent in the UK, I'm guessing. Well, I, I know. 
<laughs> so okay. interesting. Um, okay, anything else on the radar that, that you think our listeners should be aware of in terms of opportunities? Look, for us here, that's kind of the most prevalent. Um, how, how, how do you see the power planning function uh, playing out with the technology uh, at the moment? Because I know Australia in particular have got a few um, – tech firms that are trying to to target this and we're going to get them on the podcast at some point. So they're targeting this whole suitability report or letter writing uh, kind of area. How do you see that playing out? Yeah, I've been asked this question quite a lot recently. Um, you know, there there is very much been this conversation around, you know, power planning disappearing altogether because of AI, because it's it's a role that can be very much replaced and automated. Um, for me, I think it's an opportunity to evolve that role into something different, um, you know, and I think that role has always evolved with technology and, you know, from calculator to online, you know, modelling projection, you know, software and stuff to to AI to whatever, you know, the next thing may be. For me, I think this is an opportunity for power planners and for anybody, you know, that manages power planning to really look at how to evolve with what's happening and what that can look like and, you know, whether these these people can then become more of an advisory role for, for financial planners or, you know, I just think there's a lot of opportunity there. I, I just don't think, I don't believe that it's just going to be obsolete. I think yeah. there's room for, yeah. So, 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 I mean, my opinion with power planning is that power planners, true power planners will go up the skill level um, so we'll go up the value chain in terms of their ability to to solve problems. So I, I don't think skill sets are going away. I think the heart, you know, some of the labor jobs will go away in terms of the actual processing the work, but the actual thinking, the problem solving, you know, that that research, the ability to research, I think is is just going to get stronger because of this. Yeah, and I think you know I, I, a lot of power planners, and as a former power planner. You know, a lot of them will will welcome that because you know yeah. we we do get so bogged down in the 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 admin and you know those low value tasks that a lot of us just want to be able to you know prepare really great advice and build up on our skills and do the projections and the analyses and all those things that you know that's why we are power planners that's what we enjoy. Um, so, you know, the power planners that I speak to, I I know will jump at the chance to to eliminate some of those and give them off to ai or whatever you know the yeah there's there's a lot of fear i think there's a lot of fear being spread in the sector at the moment yeah. and i think i think embracing it but also looking to increase your skills i, I think is going to put you in a good place and, and power planning in particular i don't know about australia but in the uk is highly in demand and there's not many supply of great power, power planners so i i just yeah. don't see that that changing in the in the near future um but but the the actual some of the the lower value tasks in terms of the stuff that power plans don't want to do i can see that being taken by technology which is interesting um okay as we as we finish uh, and thanks for joining us what are the what are some of the steps that you're you know adopting with financial planning firms or thinking about to get them ready for this this next era of technology kind of having conversations more than anything and just, you know, making sure that people have an open mind and, you know, kind of move with the technology and I guess have an attitude of, you know, how can this technology serve me and my clients better rather than, you know, how is this a threat or, yeah. you know, what are all the risks? And certainly, you know, always be aware of the risks, but look for the opportunities as well. Um, and that's very much the conversation I'm having with a lot of people, um, you know, going into 2024 is, you know, have a look at what's out there, be curious and look at it from a selfish point of view. You know, how how can I use this to help me and how can I use this to help me, you know, scale my business and make my clients more engaged and provide a better value service to my clients? Um, that more than anything more than anything yeah. else. Do you, do you think 2024 is a good time to revisit workflows and processes in a business with 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 oh, this kind of yeah. technology okay absolutely absolutely um it's one of those things that you know tends to kind of be pushed aside because business as usual tends to you know take priority um 
But without those kind of solid sound workflows and processes, that engine room, if that's not humming, then, you know, yeah. things tend to suffer around it. Okay. Perfect. Katie, thanks for joining us. Um, how can people get hold of you? I think you mentioned an ebook, which we'll put in the uh, the show notes as well. Uh, but people generally can get hold of you via LinkedIn or, or some sort of website. Yep. So we have our, our website um, and we have, yeah, you can, I have my own LinkedIn and we have a company page. Uh, we do have an ebook and I'm looking to release the next one, hopefully before Christmas, but you know, no oh. promises. Um, so there are certainly a few ways there. Um, I'm happy to provide you all the links and yeah. You know, thanks, share thanks, them. Katie, and thanks for uh, for dialing in from Australia. It's amazing what we can do with technology these days, and, and long may Indeed. it continue. Indeed, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Tech Stack podcast, brought to you by the Next Gen Planners podcast. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and took away some useful nuggets of information. To hear more episodes, please be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to leave us a review. For more information about Next Gen Planners and our tech stack, head to nextgenplanners.co.uk forward slash tech stack. See you soon.